Welcome to our open office hours. Uh, it's Ronnie here, founder of PLR.me, and I'm joined by Richard, our director of education. Richard, all the way from Barcelona. How are you doing, Richard? I'm doing very good today, Ronnie. I'm full of humor, a little bit of sarcasm, as you know from before the call, but I'm ready to go and answer questions, and uh, I'm watching the chat and the very good and everything. Very good. Yes, we're here to answer your questions, so please use the Q&A for any questions. Um, we're going to get started. I'm going to uh, quickly share. Oh, and yes, um, for, for those of you watching live, there is going to be a recording. It will be sent out. We will send it out via email. You'll also find it on our YouTube channel. You'll also find it on our website under the video section. Uh, so definitely um, you will find that there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is we're just going to kick things off and we're going to kind of go over some of what we're going to cover uh, today. So uh, let's get started. Uh, so what we're going to cover is how Aya, she's a client of ours, created a journal from the PLR.me content. This is outstanding. This will be our special mm -hmm. guest. She will be coming a little bit later. Uh, we're also going to cover some of our most popular questions and we're going to, of course, answer your burning questions live as well. Now, what I'm going to do is, of course, Richard, our number one question, if you're new here, if you've never heard of what PLR is, but somehow you stumbled upon our website, somehow you stumbled upon this, uh, this open office hours or watching the replay, what is PLR? It's a very good question. And PLR stands for private label rights, which you have seen various various times in in when you go shopping. It is something that is called white labeling as well. Just to confuse things, let's use another acronym as well. Um, but what it means is that you license content in this case, or in the case of a retail um, shop, they license a product and they put their brand on it. Now, the easiest explanation that I always give people is bread. You buy bread in the supermarket, and it is own brand bread. They didn't manufacture the bread. They didn't set up the whole plant, get this, the scientists in to see which way is the best way to, to, to make bread. They said, let's, let's take a shortcut. Let's go out to somebody who's already manufacturing this bread and get a license to use that bread and we'll put our wrapper on it. And that is private labor rights in a nutshell. You can take it, you can brand it as your own in the case of uh, PLR.me. Uh, you can tweak it, which is an important thing that we'll talk about and you sell it as your own content. And the really good thing, Ronnie, you don't have to mention us. You don't have to say, Ronnie gave me this, Richard gave me this, nothing like that. It is yours. So it's a really, it's a really, really well-kept secret, I think. And a lot of the times, one of the questions that I get when I talk to our clients is, how come I never heard of you before? Are you guys new? And no, we've been in operation for over 12 years, but we're the best kept secret in the industry. Because people find us, they love us, and they say, wow, I'm now going to cut down the time that I spend writing content. I'm going to cut it down to well, at zero, but at least 80% of my time is going to be saved with this. Exactly. And uh, we're going to go over some examples of how, you're, how you could use it. We're going to show real world examples as well. Um, <clears throat> but first, let's actually talk about the five most popular questions. Richard. Is it easy to transform the content? This is a question that someone submitted. Thank you for that. Well, you, Richard, you're a coach. Um, you also create uh, tons of content courses and programs using the PLR.me content. You work with us here at PLR.me. I think you're the best to answer this. Is it easy to transform the content? Super easy. All you need to be able to do is either use a word processor like Microsoft Word, or for example, you could use uh, a Google Doc. Uh, if you can use, uh, I was going to say Keynote, if you're an Apple user, you could use Keynote, you could use PowerPoint for our slide decks. Once you can do that, you can use our content. It's super easy. At the very, at the very basic level, you bring it into your word processor, you change the text as you wish, and you save it. Now, to transform the content into something else, you could create a video. Uh, you could record a podcast, and that's very easy as well. So there's no complicated software. You don't need some graphic design software to use our content. It is just common denominator programs, word processor, uh, a presentation, and that is it. Super simple. 
Nope, I've, I've lost you running. I don't hear you. Sorry, I'm, I was ah, muted. There we go. Uh, sorry, I'm back. Uh, so we, uh, that's fantastic. Now, this was this is a great question that came in from, I'm really sorry, I'm going to butcher your name, Vojko, Vojko hopefully. Um, I think you mentioned earlier you're from Slovenia. So that's so cool. Great to have you with us here. Now, you mentioned it's easy for you guys, but I have to translate all the documents into my language. Uh, true. I mean, translation is not that's a exactly huge advantage. It, it, it is a huge advantage. It's work for sure, but isn't it a whole lot easier to translate something that exists than have to write it from scratch? Mm. And actually we have some clients who are doing some amazing things using the content after they've translated it, because guess what? Once you translate it, it's now effectively unique. Like you're, 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 there's no competition. And especially going in Slovenia, going to, you know, uh, we have some clients who are in Holland or Brazil, uh, you translate it into your native tongue and guess what? It's completely different and you can now dominate that market and you can stand out in that market. So really, really powerful. Um, we actually, I'm gonna show you an example of this. I'm gonna just pull it up on my screen. Uh, but Richard, I mean, I want you to comment as well hmm. because you're kind of unique position because not only are you in Barcelona, so you speak Spanish, uh, you're Irish <laughs> and you're an English teacher as well. You're a coach. You're you're all over the place, and 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 I love that about you. <laughs> in a good way. Um, in a good way. In a very in a very good way. So I just would like you to share while I just pull mm. this up um, some of your thoughts on translation and and on markets. I know certainly I've talked with some of our clients who are who are in Brazil or who are in uh, Spanish speaking countries, and I always say to them, you have a unique opportunity because if you if you read, understand, and can translate from English into your own language. That's going to be a huge advantage that you can become this coach and nobody will know where the, where the, where the content came from because it's completely unique to you. So this, you know, it's a, it's a huge advantage um, to be able to translate it. Now, somebody has asked, do you have, uh, do you have any best translation tools? Um, one that I've used for translation, you, we obviously Google Translate, but there's another which is called Deepl, D-E-E-P-L.com. And I've talked to native speakers of in uh, French native speakers, Spanish native speakers, and they say the translation is uh, better than what Google Translate will do. So um, I'll, I'll put that link in. Yeah, Ronnie's just put it in, uh, deeple.com. So as a start, you could definitely use that to translate. It has a limited set of languages, but you could use that to translate into Portuguese, let's say for Brazil. And then what you could do is you could just tweak it. You could just fix up some of the grammatical um uh, pieces on it but it'll save you 90 percent of the time so take our content put it into deepl get the basic translation done and then tweak it a little bit and there you go there awesome you go. now i want to share i mentioned translation right now i want to share with you what some of our clients are doing using the content and specifically when it comes to translation so first off to, to show you how to get to this page um if you were to go to plr.me click on the learn um, tab at the top and then go to content inspiration gallery. That's the link right here. And first of all, watch this video. If you haven't seen it already, uh, we show some several examples of how our clients are using the content. And also there's a slider here showing several more examples of how uh, clients are using the content, but I'm going to scroll down and there's lots of little articles here talking about different ways that you can create products using the content or how you can build your email list, how you can repurpose the content. And this section here, how to take over international markets by translating the content. That's the article hmm. that I wanted to mention to you now. And if I just click that, you can see here, there's great uh, resource about what another client has done using the content. She translated it, I believe into Dutch. And uh, so you can see her story in here and some examples, it, really good. Uh, it, she, there's a video she created, like definitely check this out. Um, there's some ideas and tips and tricks for you if you want to translate it. So just go to learn and then go to content inspiration gallery and you will find that there. So absolutely international markets is a great way to, uh, to take advantage of the content because again, quite frankly, it becomes very unique. You're taking the material, you're translating it and you could hire a translator or you could use an online service like Richard, you mentioned Deepl, D-E-E. D E E P L dot com. Um, you can hire a translator or you just do it yourself. You can read the content, especially if you're bilingual, read the content and then speak it, record a video, right? You can keep it really simple. Um, so, um, so that's the, that's the idea of translation. I think that's a 
a great way of repurposing it. Um, and then back to our question, the original question was all about easy, how easy it is to transform the content. Well, just think of the PLR.me content as words, right? Well, what, what can you do with words? You can speak the words and you can have audio. You can record the words with your face and have videos or live streams or webinars. You can take those words and turn them into graphics like infographics or viral images. You can take those words and combine them with other words and make eBooks and courses. So the point isn't really to overcomplicate it in our, in our brains to think, well, I don't know what to do with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just words. What do you do with words? You communicate, you're sharing a story, you're explaining something in some way. Um, that is, that's what, uh, that's all it is really as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one question I know that did come up was somebody said, can I use one of these artificial intelligence speech translators so that I would type in the text and it would speak out the actual text for me and create a, like an audio file. Those can be useful in certain situations, but what I always say to clients is if you want to build up your authority, they want to see you and they want to hear you. So while you could, you know, get somebody to do voiceovers, etc., it's probably best for you if you want to use um, any type of video or audio to do it yourself. And it takes time. It pra it's, it's practice. It's just the first time it's going to be awful. The second time it's going to be not so awful. And by the time you've done 20 of them, it's going to be perfect. So there could be a place for that. But I always think if you want to build up and be authentic, they want to see you. They want to see you on camera. Absolutely. Um, Let's get to the next question here. Uh, and I know, please, yeah. uh, if you have any additional questions, submit it in the q and I know there is, uh, Regina, you, you submitted one. Great, we will get to that. Um, and any other questions, please definitely submit it into the Q&A box on Zoom. All right, so how can I use the content in my business? Well, we. We gave you some examples already, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can translate it, you can turn it into video, audio podcasts, uh, infographics, full courses. Um, ultimately, the very first question you have to ask is, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to mm -hmm. attract new clients? You know, are you trying to grow your email list? Are you trying to convert your existing clients into paying members? Are you trying to create a membership site? I mean, ask yourself what that big uh, reason why is. And then you can start slotting in the content to fit your reason, like what, what your big objective is. Uh, Richard, you want to talk more about that? Um, yeah, I, I think this is it. You have to know each piece of content has a different objective. Um, it could be just to make people aware that you're actually there. Okay. Um, one of our articles could be used for that purpose, just to say, hey, um, here's some information about goal setting. That makes me aware of Richard Butler. Oh, okay. Oh, by the way, I have a free report that you can download or a free checklist that you can download. Oh, okay. Now they become aware. Now they, they get onto my list. And then I say, well, I have an ebook. What am I going to do with that? Well, now I'm going to use that as an ebook, or I could use it as a video. I could record it. Um, and I can sell that to people. So think of the objective of what do I want to do with that content? And I think if I can go to Regina's question, this kind of uh, uh, ties nicely in that uh, Regina's asking, should I focus on putting out a short course on Udemy and post on social media for the course? I need help getting started to reconnect to my audience. Well, I was thinking, why not do a Facebook Live to start to reconnect with your audience? Um, if we're talking about Facebook, with, which I, I think you mentioned there. So why not start with that? Um, take one of our articles and you can just summarize it and say, hey guys, it's been a while. Actually, the first thing I would do is I would actually do a first live of, hey guys, it's been a while, here's what I've been up to. So that it's not suddenly that, hey guys, I'm putting on a course on Udemy, it's all about this. No, no, hey guys, I've been really, really busy. I just wanted to take five minutes to tell you what's been going on. I've been developing a couple of courses. Um, I've been doing it on my website or I've just been taking a break from life. And now I'm back and I want to know how I can help you. Always on social media, ask a question to get engagement. Because a lot of times people say, my social media posts get absolutely no traction. But ask a question because we are sheep. This is the problem. We just nice, nice, nice. And then somebody says, like my picture. And they go like, and then if somebody says, what do you think of this particular situation of goal setting is nonsense? No, that's not true. And then people start to argue about it. And that's all good because then people start to engage. That kicks in. The, uh, kicks off the algorithm for social media and then they'll boost your post and just keep doing and keep trying things because 
You may have a great post and it gets absolutely no traction. And then you put up some silly quote and 200 people will reply to it. You, I don't understand social media sometimes. I think <laughs> you, put the, you put the most philosophical statement on and it's like tumbleweed. And then you put something silly and people love it. And it's like, okay, a silly picture of you going, something like that and people love it you know? what's richard doing it's you know it, it, it makes it doesn't sense. always make sense but i think what you said there um does make a lot of sense is that you you want to give people a reason why for your absence so regina you mentioned mm -hmm. you know I, i'm working on a course like but i've lost kind of connection with my audience well great segue to your course is to say hey i'm sorry for being away for a little bit but the reason why and that's a powerful statement the reason why is that I've been working on something for you. I've been creating this whole course for you because I want to help you. And I've listened to your feedback and I've, I've, I've worked on this for, um, for you because I want to help you and support you and help you achieve breakthroughs and transformations and whatever language that you want to use. But that reason why is powerful. And now you can start sharing. Now you're, oh, you're sort of opening up the, the, um, the storybook, mm. so to speak. Because now you're saying, well, this is what the course, I'm working on this course for you. And this is what the topic of the course is. And now you can easily segue into, well, hey, what, what's your biggest question about this? How could I help you? And you can segue into the next thing. Well, hey, you know, we, I received a, a several private messages from people saying, hey, my biggest question about, you know, this issue is X, Y, and Z. And then you can start answering those. And you can do, like Richard mentioned, Facebook Lives, or you can do just text posts or create graphics on social media. You want to start building up the appeal and the excitement and enthusiasm with your audience from now, because when your course does launch, you have someone to launch it to. You don't want to get your course done. And then all of a sudden you turn to marketing and now people are like, well, where is, where are you? Well, where have you been? You want to connect with them from now. And, and I think one of the things that you mentioned, a storybook, I think we need to start telling stories. Um, if we just say, mm, hi guys, I've just been really busy. It's not as, it's not as great as to say, I want, I'm going to get on a Facebook live and I'm going to tell you the two reasons why I've been super busy. And one of them is so funny and the people are curious. So it, it, it's, it's about, and I was working with, with a couple of clients today and I was telling them, I was preparing them for interviews. And I said, you have to tell a story about why you went from one job to another and show the progression. Don't just say I worked here for two years and then I worked there. So I worked here and then I wanted to progress my career and I saw this great opportunity in such and such a company and I went there. People engage with stories. So we, we do that naturally. We vibe off each other as well on these webinars, but it's good and we tell stories. It's not just, hi, this is PLR.me. Uh, welcome to the next slide. And things like that you have to engage people you have to be you want to inject your personality people remember people buy from people absolutely you know yeah they're going to buy from you because they like you because if you know what is different between me talking about goal setting and ronnie talking about goal setting ronnie has a different personality i have a different personality lots of people will grab gravitate away from you but lots of people will gravitate to you because it's you and that's, you got to be you in a nutshell. Exactly. And you can use the foundation, the, the raw materials is the PLR.me content. And then you inject you and your personality and your mm -hmm. stories and your examples. Because Richard's life experience is going to be different than mine. It's going to be different than yours. So ultimately you have to be you and you can take mm -hmm. the content and then say, oh, that reminds me of this story or that reminds me of this client. Or that reminds me of, you know, this tip that I learned when I was a kid or that I learned yesterday. It doesn't matter share those stories and integrate it, interweave it with mm -hmm. the PLR.me content. Uh, so now let's get to the next question here, which is, uh, what if you don't have what I'm looking for? So what if you don't have a specific topic mm -hmm. in the PLR.me library? What do I do? Richard, want to take okay. that? Yeah, I, I, and I, and I have a, a very good example of this. I was on the client who was a marriage coach. And he said, but you don't have a course that I can use for my, and, and I'll get to the specific question, for my particular uh, niche. And I said, okay, take an ebook and make that ebook into a course from the chapters. So what you need to do is think creatively. Um, if you type in something like, I'm looking for 
um, keto diets for 40 to 42 year old males living in New York. That's, we don't have that topic for that exact thing. So maybe you need to rethink your keywords slightly, but remember that all our content is fully editable. So you can take the basis of an idea. So let's say it's about, um, I'm looking for anxiety, uh, how to help uh, anxious teenagers. We mightn't have anything about anxious teenagers, but we have a lot about anxiety that you can then tailor and use your experience because you are experienced in what you do. So you can use your experience and blend it in. Um, sometimes um, we do get some very um, obscure requests from people because they have a very, very specific niche. Um, and sometimes we can't cater for that very experienced niche. But what I tell people is maybe they're not looking for that exact thing because they don't know what it is but use our content to scaffold them into your actual sphere of influence so maybe we don't have um yoga with dogs okay uh, an ebook about yoga with dogs but maybe people are looking for yoga in general and they come in and they look at that and then you say by the way i have a studio in downtown la and i do yoga with dogs oh well that's really interesting because i love dogs and i love yoga i never thought about that so think around and outside and inside and above and below the box to try and get things but also think about the more specific you are sometimes people won't find you so you need to scaffold them in with other topics of interest that are combined with it and then bring them into your particular sphere of influence absolutely i mean another perfect example sometimes we have clients who are real estate agents or you know uh, investment uh, financial planners well we may have some content along those lines, but I've received uh, in the mail uh, newsletters from real realtors. And are they just talking about houses? No. I mean, a lot of times they're giving mm -hmm. recipes, they're giving stories and, and you know, how to, uh, how to relax and how to, you know, how to spend time with your kids and family. Like the point of a newsletter for a real estate agent or a financial planner isn't to just give real estate advice. Mm -hmm. That could be part of it, but that's not the entirety of it because they, a realtor is trying to get someone to read that newsletter. And what if someone's not interested in moving right now? The point of that newsletter, the point of that interaction, the email, the, the, the social post is engagement. It's to keep people top of mind. And so sometimes content can be around the topic, right? Mm -hmm. Like what Richard mm -hmm. said, it doesn't mean it has to be exactly about it. So for a real estate agent, you can be talking about, you know, how to make your home more a homey or cozy you can talk about you know just enjoying your yard and spending time with your kids in your neighborhood and any number of topics related to that that maybe we do have a lot of content on mm -hmm. and then you can then modify and say hey if you're ready whenever you're ready to sell your home let's talk that's a totally different angle because now you're focusing on the whole person not just what i can do for you because the whole person is well maybe i'm not ready to hire a financial planner or a real estate agent or you name it right now but when i do i want to remember you and that's why things like calendars and that's why things like newsletters and magazines and social posts that's why they're so important think of the whole person what are they struggling with uh, what what questions come up that maybe aren't directly related to real estate maybe uh, you can talk about as a realtor for example you can talk about mortgages and and the mm. that piece and financial planning and that piece but maybe it's also planning for your children's future or maybe it's also just about spending time together as a family whatever it is think make a list make a list of all the different types of topics that are kind of all encompassing um okay so let me see yeah so uh someone Jonathan has, a, has a great question yep oh, sorry so uh, i have a particular niche which is mental health in the lgbtq community um I want something for the younger audience, for example, coming out. How can I do that? Well, again, think around that. There could be the whole theme of bullying that you could bring people into your sphere of influence. Um, there could be, you know, being assertive, um, not being not being afraid, um, becoming more um, self confident. So again, these are these are universal topics that can be applied to any niche. Just with a little bit of tweaking, you can say, well, don't be nervous. A lot of people are anxious about this. A lot of people are anxious about the other, uh, whatever it may be. But you can use those topics and then interweave it again with your experience and bring it in.
And, and let's actually get to the next question because I think that relates as well. So how much mm. of your content can I alter? All of it. <laughs> I mean, all of it. You can change the title. You can change the entirety of the content or you can keep it as is. It's up to you. So you get the full source files. And that means, again, that, that you can completely transform it. You can change the medium. So from text to audio or video or infographics or podcast, you can change that completely. Uh, and so you're not required to, to change all of it, but it does make it more you and aligned with your brand and, and your vision and your audience and their needs. So um, sometimes people ask like, well, well, wait, can I just, do I have to use it as is? Mm. No, you can change it. You can change the branding, the colors, the, the theme, the styles, the text. You can add text, remove text. You can, like we have some clients who completely um, changed the audience, right? So if you're talking about anxiety, well, you can be talking about anxiety for children, anxiety for teenagers, women, men. You can completely transform the content to be uh, suited to your audience. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Amazing advice. Here's, here's another one. Do you have content for fashion bloggers? Again, you could talk about how to be more confident, how, especially for teens, how to be more confident, how to walk and be assertive, how to... Um, uh, I, I, no, I've just gone blank. <laughs> <laughs> well, but again, you let's, see, let's live, talk about what is someone trying to accomplish? Like, mm. So as a fashion blogger, now you look at your audience. What are they trying to do? Like, what, what are they trying to, to get a date, right? Are they mm -hmm. trying, to, um, trying to attract someone or be attractive or get a job? Like, you can have a whole bunch of content relating to fashion that, again, you're looking at the whole person. So the whole person is, well, here are some ideas to look and act confidently for your job interview, right? Because mm -hmm you can now take the content relating to a job interview, tweak it to fashion, how to look confident, project, you know, uh, enthusiasm and, 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 uh, and so on, on confidence and so on. And now you can have content for a fashion blog. Now, but that, that's not the whole piece, right? Because I recognize we're not going to have like, you know, the latest, uh, greatest blouses and pants and socks. And we're, that's not what we do, but you can take the content that surrounds the topic right? The whole person. And the whole person is going to be talking about how to, how to look good, feel good, you know, get a date and so healthy on, eating. right? So, mm. Healthy eating. Yeah, exactly. That of mm. course relates, you know, especially maybe with summer coming up and people want to look good in the swimsuit, not that, I don't know, with COVID, who knows what's going to happen in the summer and depending where you live. So, you know, there's all sorts of like sorts of topics that, that um, relate to fashion. Um, we had a client one time talk about, you know, I sell men's fashion. Do you have content related to that? Well, same thing. I remember that. Why, why do they, uh, what do you sell? Well, I sell suits. Okay. Well, why does someone wear a suit for weddings, for special occasions, maybe for, for, you know, maybe they're a best man and they need to give a speech. Well, maybe you can talk about public speaking and how that relates to men's fashion, how you want to look good. You want to sound good. You want, you want to project this, um, you know, humor, but whatever, like you, you can think about the whole person and, and think about all the types of problems, questions, concerns, fears, anxieties that they have, and then create content relating to that. Um, okay, so we have some questions in here. Um, <clears throat> Kamika, I'm starting out as a mindset coach. How would you advise me to niche without missing out on potential clients? Also, what type of mindset material do you have? Richard, I'm going to let you take that one. Uh, we have lots of mindset material. Um, I don't have a count right now, but we would have ebooks, we would have slide decks, we would have action guides, etc. Um, I think you can answer that question, Kamika, by thinking about who is your potential client. Again, niche down. You cannot be. I always use the example of uh, um, I was talking to a client, and I said, "What type of coach are you?" I'm a life coach. Okay. Um, who's your Who's your audience? Well, everybody what you help them with, everything. You can't be everything to everybody. So after talking to them for a while, we actually did niche down exactly what they, uh, where they should be actually focusing. So I think you need to say, okay, well, who do I want to focus on? And what are their challenges? And that's it. And it doesn't, you know, don't try and get females from the age of 20 to 60, because the problems that a female has in her 20s is different from, from her 60s. 
the problems that a, a, a man has in his career in his 20s is completely different to his 40s when he suddenly realizes, is this it? Corporate America is not where I want to be. <laughs> and I want something else. So that's not the same for a 20 year old who is thinking, I want to I, I want to be there. I want to be in that corner office, etc. So you need to focus in and look at your client and don't worry about those 20 year olds, those 60 year olds. If you have the experience of working with 40 year olds, because maybe you're in your 40s, focus on that niche, focus on what um, you have good experience of. And I think that's always important because sometimes I get people and they ask me, what's the most popular item that I should be selling from PLR.me? And I say, don't look at it that way. Look at it at who your clients are and what you can offer and help them with. Um, I think and I want to comment about that as well. I mean, first of all, Takresh, I hope I'm saying your name right, Takresha. Uh, she said, yes. this is very true. I struggled when I did that. Absolutely. Because if you're just going to say your audience is every person in America, I mean, that's not your audience, right? You're not mm. selling. I mean, even food is so like, you can't even say food is something that everyone would agree on, right? Like some people will like a certain type of bread and a certain type of beans and or no beans and meat, no meat, vegetarian, like no one's going to agree on even food, right? So how could they, how could you possibly even agree on, I'm, I'm a mindset coach for everybody. So what I recommend, and I'm going to paste the link into the, uh, into the Q&A, what I highly recommend, and I'm going to show it on the screen as well. If you're watching the replay later, we will put the link up for you. Um, go through our secret sauce workbook. Oh, yeah, so what this know. is, this, yeah, it's, it's a kind of a hidden tool. We don't really talk a lot about it, but it does come up time and again. Um, what this is, is, is it gives you a framework to understand who you are, what makes you special, what's your secret sauce, and then who is your audience, what do they struggle with, where do they hang out, what, what can you do for them, and how can you help them, this just takes you through the whole thinking process to go from point A to point B to point C to figure out your secret sauce, so a mindset coach is one piece of it, but then you want to think about, well, who am I targeting? Who is that person? I want you to actually create a vision, even draw a picture of your ideal client. What do they look like? Male? Are they female? Are they 42 with kids or are they 65 and about to retire? Like, who are they? You want to actually really get specific about this. Now, when I say get specific, it doesn't mean you're going to reject someone who doesn't exactly fit that mold. But what you actually want to do is you want to start tailoring your message to that person. You want to talk when in your emails, in your, in your videos, in your social posts, and everything that you do, you want to talk as if you're talking to that one person, that one person that you defined when going through this workbook. Because ultimately, what's going to end up happening is when you speak to one person, you're going to, they're going to feel like, Oh, she gets me. Like, I, I mm. understand the struggle. I feel the same pain. I want to work with that person. Versus if you talk in sort of inclusive, all-encompassing language, now it's kind of like, uh, I don't know that get it. I got a good vibe about her. Like, she just maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just not a good fit because there's something missing. There's that, quite frankly, that's why we call it the secret sauce work, but mm. work, workbook. There's that secret sauce that comes in when someone just, I just feel like we're a good fit. You want them to feel that. You want them to experience that. And the only way that's going to happen is by getting very specific. So that's why I highly, highly recommend going through the Secret Sauce Workbook. Um, that's going to really be a game changer for you. And I think what you said of, of having this, this profile of the person, the avatar is really important as, as, as they call it in the business. Um, because when you start to do marketing material or writing sales pages, if I'm writing a sales page and I say, you know, have you been working in corporate America for the last 20 years? And suddenly realize it's not about the corner office. It's not about the car parking space and you feel empty inside. Well, because I'm targeting that market, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. You are talking to me. So that's where you want to get that avatar. And as Ronnie says, put a name on it, you know? So it's Mary. Mary is 42. She's two kids. She's come out of a relationship. She's lost her self-confidence. Get to know what Mary, what, what challenges she has. And then you can write to that person. And of course, as you say, don't, if somebody comes along and says, well, I'm 43 
uh, will you coach me? And you say, no, no, I only deal with 42 year olds. No, I, I don't do that. <laughs> but, 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 but you need to focus. You can't be every, everything to everybody. Um, I want to say one more thing because um, Regina said, Richard's niche video is great for clarifying your niche. I recently completed the Secret Sauce workbook. It was great. So thank you, Regina, for that uh, vote of confidence as well with it. I want to also point out where to find Richard's video about how to clarify your niche and, and how to build a coaching sales funnel. They kind of go hand in hand. So I'm on the videos page. Again, if you go to plr.me slash videos, or if you just click on learn and then go to how to use PLR content videos, you'll get to this page and you'll scroll down to the marketing and sales section right here. And then you'll see how to clarify your coaching niche and how to build a, a, a coaching sales funnel. So uh, take a look at those videos as well. Really game changer, uh, great videos that Richard put together. And thank you, Regina, for the reminder about that. Oh, uh, you're muted, Richard. Hello, hello. Um, okay, Carla's question, um, I love a lot. I'm a legal and business consultant trying to decide on what type of free download to create for new subscribers. What type of freebies are working well now? Again, it depends on your audience. But one of the things I personally tell uh, clients is a very good freebie to give is something like a checklist or something where people have to answer questions. Why? Because a lot of our worksheets or, or checklists are accompanied by an ebook that you can download separately. So I get I download something on time management and it says prioritize the five things you need done today. But I start writing those things down, but now, now I don't know how to actually put what I've written down into action. But if I have the checklist or I send a follow-up email and say, if you want to take this to the next level and you want to know how to actually uh, prioritize in a more efficient way, jump on a call with me or download my, my ebook that accompanies this checklist, I think that works well. Because one danger is you don't want to give too much value in the free download in the sense it's a 72 page ebook. Why? Because when I go and sell my next 72 page ebook, the person's going to say, but you gave me the last one for free. So why do you want me to now pay? So I always, always think about that as well. How much you give away, depending on what else you have in your sales funnel. And this is where, and we have a video uh, just where Ronnie showed you as well about creating your sales funnel, meaning that you give something away for free, then you have some sort of offer and then you have a low ticket, a mid ticket, and a high or higher ticket uh, option, and then maybe a signature program so that you can build people through an actual uh, funnel like that. So I think something that agitates a problem within the uh, visitor is always good. And I mean agitate in a good uh, uh, sense that they say, oh yeah, well, now that I know that I have problems prioritizing, I really do want to know how to actually, that was a really useful exercise, but now I want to know how I can actually actually implement better strategies. And I just want to add to that. So your audience, you mentioned you're in legal and business, they're busy, right? So you don't want something over overwhelming. Um, I think the best question to first ask yourself is what is their biggest struggle? And maybe you can make a list of a few things like what, what is their biggest struggle? What do you help people with? What are they struggling with? And then can you create a resource that helps them just with that little thing that you can, um, that, 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 that their pain is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say you're a parenting coach, uh, a parenting coach, you could be talking about young children, like, you know, how to get your baby to sleep or toddlers and temper tantrums. You could be talking about behavioral issues and attitude as the kids get older and the teenage years and so on. There's a lot to unpack there, but depending on your audience, for example, you can just talk about, Here's, you know, seven discipline tips and tricks to get your kids to listen, you know, to clean their room or, or to have, uh, here are three tips to have peaceful car rides or whatever it is. So think about your audience and their specific needs and what do they struggle with? What do they need help on? And then you can create a, like Richard said, a checklist is great. You can also have a short video series about it. You can also create, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, if it's if it's about budgeting or or something relating to business with numbers, you can create a, a workbook like a, a, a cheat sheet kind of a spreadsheet document that they can track things. You know, just think about what their biggest burning question is and uh, and their biggest problem, and then you can create a lead magnet around that. 
Um, um, okay, so let's. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, there was just another question there from uh, Chris Harrison and NECA. Can I sell your audio books? If I sell your audio books, then I have to use the corresponding resource without changing them. Well, what you can do with our ebooks, because we don't actually have uh, fully recorded audio books, but with our ebooks, you could certainly record them and they do become unique because it's your unique voice, your unique personality, etc. Um, I would always say with the corresponding resources, such as the covers, etc., go to somewhere like fiverr.com and get somebody just to design a new cover for it. Because again, then that makes it more unique. So change the name to fit your niche. Um, five time management strategies for busy moms, for busy executives, for working dads, for stay at home dads. That makes it unique. And then when you record it, it's completely unique to you. And, and specifically about um, uh, the book covers, you can use this, a place like Canva. They have a, a several templates uh, that you can use to completely rebrand uh, the content. I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to go to the plr.me videos page and uh, oh, I didn't hit the share button. So you can see here, there is how to create beautiful PDFs using Canva. So you definitely want to take a look at that. Um, and I think there's another video. Let me double check. Um, it's, just it's about quite how pixelated, to I think, Ronnie. What's that? You know, the screen is quite pixelated. I see it quite pixelated. Oh, weird. Just so you know. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. I will go to the plr.me slash videos page. You will see there's a Canva video there. You can just do a search for Canva um, on the videos page. We also have a video about um, uh, editing, the P editing a PDF. So uh, that is also, oh, here it is. Uh, how to change or replace the cover of a PDF for free. So again, you can use Canva to create your PDF and, um, uh, sorry, book cover. And that's a great, easy, cheap way of transforming the content. So take a look on the tutorials site and you will find that I'm gonna close this probably because my- Hey, Ronnie. You're lagging here playing a video. Uh, so that's another way of using the, um, using Canva to create a book cover. But like uh, Richard, as you mentioned, record your own voice. That's gonna be great. It's a great addition and a great transformation of the content. Um, so before we continue with some of the Q and A's, let's get back to the slides real quick because we want to make sure we cover what we have here, um, and we'll, it'll also probably answer some of your questions as well. Um, so I'm just starting out. How can I build my audience? Um, this was a question I think Regina also mentioned uh, earlier as well. Uh, Richard, do you want to talk about this? Yes, um, I'm going to sound like a broken record because I'm going to say, <laughs> make sure that you have the audience defined. Uh, like Ronnie had said, make sure that um, you solve some problem for them with your free giveaway that you're going to give them. Um, check to see where your people are hanging out or where your potential audience are hanging out. Because while you may say, I'm a career coach, I'm going to um, put something up on LinkedIn about changing jobs maybe people won't like that post or ask you questions because they'll say, hey, my boss might look and see that I've actually asked a question about changing jobs and now I could get into trouble and they think I'm going to leave. So again, you have to see and match, match the audience to the actual, uh, to, to find where they, where they hang out on social media and start asking questions there. Again, if they all hang out on Facebook, it's not a good place to start talking about business maybe because Facebook is more like a, a lounge that you just kick back and you might talk about relationships etc with your buddies type of thing so think about that um, start building out content uh, to build your authority so start you know posting uh, blog posts videos a podcast is a good idea as well but the key is to be consistent okay to make sure that you are uh, consistently putting out the content on a regular basis if it's every week you put it out every week if it's uh uh, twice a week, you put out twice a week. And uh, there is a pivot point. And I remember, Ronnie, we talked about this, about um, uh, one of our clients who had a YouTube channel. And she slowly but surely kept putting out videos, kept putting out videos, kept putting out videos. And it's amazing. You, uh, There is a graphic of where the algorithm kicked in and suddenly her YouTube channel grew. It was just phenomenal. So you never know how close you are to that pivot point. Just keep being persistent and keep putting out the content there. 
um, and, and make it realistic. And I've mentioned this before. Don't say I'm going to put out four videos a day every single day. Don't say I'm going to put out four videos a week if it's going to give you uh, uh, too much stress. One video a week is plenty. Um, I think when we talked about YouTube, uh, Ronnie, uh, you mentioned that there was somebody I think who put out one video a month. But when that video came out, YouTube were waiting for it, his audience were waiting for it, and it skyrocketed. So, you know, build it up, be consistent, um, and your audience will then start to hear from you. And sometimes I get messages from people who didn't even like my post, but they said, oh, I saw that post, it was really interesting. And I'm like, why didn't you like it? And why didn't you comment on it? And they said, I didn't want to, I was a little bit shy. So you never know how many people you're affecting. And then when you launch your product, when you launch your service, people say, yeah, I've watched Richard for the last six months. I love what he says. I'm going to jump on board his membership or whatever, maybe. Awesome. Uh, so we have a question. What about content for, multi for a multicultural relationship yeah. counseling? Uh, Richard, want to, uh, to chime in about that as well? Well, yeah, I, I think um, you could, again, you can take our content about relationships in general, uh, in general and then fit it to your particular niche of multiculturalism because you are the expert on that. So um, the, the general challenges are probably going to be quite similar, whether, for example, it's Europeans, Americans, Irish, Spanish, they're all going to have the same relationship problems. There will be, there will be you know, specific things due to uh, different cultures, but that's where you tweak and put in your expertise. Exactly. And I want to just point out, again, make a list of what what is unique about um, your practice, right? What what makes you the multicultural relationship expert? Why do they come to you? What questions do they have? And how do you help them? Make a list of that, you know, it, and you'll probably be able to boil down some of those topics to maybe more uh, broader topics like confidence or anxiety or conflict or stress. And then you can take resources across those broader categories and then take those, nicheify them. Well, nicheify them is just my fancy way of saying, realign it with your, with your audience, realign it with your brand, realign it with your methodology, and you can just take that existing content, transform it. Um, so hopefully that is helpful. Um, so someone asked earlier, do you recommend wordpress.org for building websites? I noticed that some of your tools may link up to WordPress. And then Nikki is also asking about um, how and when do you start a blog? What is the best, where is the best place for a blog? Facebook, uh, I'm not sure what Facebook private is, but Facebook group. Um, so in terms of a blog, I mean, my first question is, well, why do you want to start a blog? And what's the point? Is it just to have content on your site? Um, the biggest piece, as, as Richard mentioned earlier, is consistency. You want to be consistent in how you uh, post content. So if you're going to find it overwhelming to update your site, and update your Facebook and update your YouTube and whatever stuff that you're doing, whatever areas that you're publishing content, um, it's better for you to do one or two mediums really well than to do 10 mediums terribly. Because ultimately what's going to happen is someone's going to look at your Facebook and see, oh, she hasn't posted in six months or six years, or oh, the last time that they posted a blog post was 2018. Like you don't want that, right? So whatever medium that you want to pick, make sure you do it well, make sure you do it consistently. To go back to the question about WordPress, obviously um, WordPress is one of the biggest platforms out there for creating websites. Um, it's free. There are, I don't know, tens of thousands of plugins that you can access to enhance and improve your site in different ways. We also have some WordPress plugins that help you to post content regularly on your site and um, to help you rewrite content and so on. So if you're going to go uh, the WordPress route, definitely that's, I think that's a great option, but I, I'm of the, I'm of the mindset, honestly, now that if you are already on Squarespace or um, what are the popular ones? Uh, wow. I can't remember. Oh, uh, Wix is another popular one. Like whatever, like whatever you have already, just do it and stay with it. Do it well. Don't spend weeks, months, or years trans transferring data and go from this service to another service. That's not the point. I don't want you to think, oh, Ronnie said WordPress, so I have to switch everything to WordPress. No, nope, you don't need to do that. Uh, the, the point is more so about consistency and publishing consistently. Um, and to answer, Nikki, your question, um, blog is going to be on your site, mm. so it's better to have the, the content on your own site. That means Google traffic and 
Yahoo and Bing and all the other search engines will kind of direct traffic to your own website as, as opposed to a Facebook group. They're sort of totally different. Mm. Um, yeah. One there just on the trauma and business coach is a better type of public or private Facebook group. I would say you could you could start with a public group that anybody can access. And then when you build up a lot of content and a lot of following there, then maybe you have a private group which you could maybe charge entry into or you might say, well, this is the private group where I'm going to share, you know, uh, um, uh, major tips that won't be available in the public group. One caution about Facebook, I guess, is I always say to people, have some sort of web presence. And if you can have your name like Dr. Richard Butler, that would be even better than um, just something else. But the reason is that if you rely on Facebook, if something happens and Facebook closed down your group for whatever reason, for some sort of violation, which they could do, you could potentially lose all of your audience. So it's good to have the Facebook group, but also try and have people, you know, sign up for your products on your website or onto your mailing list. I think that always just be just be wary of that because, you know, people build up very, very good groups in Facebook and then something goes wrong. And Facebook just say shut down and they can shut you down for months. So just, just be careful of that. Always have your own website as well, I think is good. Um, and something short and catchy that people know and your name is probably the best one. So just a um, couple, I'm going to answer a couple of quick ones, but we have our special guest here. So I want to make sure that we're going to, to have time um, to have her on. Um, so, but uh, just a couple of quick questions just about this um, Someone was asking about the WordPress plugins on our site. If you go to just the top bar, you click on tools, you will see all of our tools there and you'll see which ones are WordPress plugins. So you can take a look at that. Um, and in terms, Nikki, you're mentioning, how do you start a YouTube channel? Um, so it's complicated to get into like all the nitty gritty right mm -hmm. now, but I can tell you that um, you, your best bet before you start a YouTube channel would be to really think about um, who is it that you're talking to and what kind of content you want to produce, how frequently you want to publish that content. If you can't commit to a vid a new video at least once every two weeks, like ideally mm. once a week, but at least once every two weeks. And if you cannot commit to, uh, you know, a six month runway, to be honest, at least, meaning I commit to publishing a video every two weeks for the next six months. If you can't do that, it's not the time to start a YouTube channel. Um, we're going to actually be in the next uh, few weeks, we're gonna be releasing a video with Dr. Tracy Marks, who is our client. And she has, goodness, uh, 500,000 subscribers on, on YouTube, maybe more, I, maybe my numbers are off. Um, she's had millions of views of her videos on YouTube. And she talks about what she did and how she accomplished that using YouTube, using her content, using her own expertise as well. Um, so look out for that coming soon. Um, to help you with that. I don't okay. think I've even seen that. No, it's I it's with know. the it's so with the video better. editor. It's a yeah. it's a it's a good a good length interview, just kind of going over some of the um, what she's done, and it's fantastic. I, I look forward to that. Of that. Um, okay, so let me um, I uh, let me get you in here. So I um, I is awesome. I is so awesome. I. Um, can you hear us? And probably she's probably- Oh, yeah, there. there it is. I can hear you now. Hello, hello. <laughs> awesome. It is so great to have you. I, I want to, um, first of all, thank you for being here. And I want to also share my screen for a second because I shared something in the private Facebook group for members. Um, she created this absolutely beautiful affirmation and reflection journal. It is outstanding. I mean, it's so cool. This is just a little uh, couple of screenshots of what, what you did. But I, I want you, if you don't mind, just share what you've done, how you've done it, and you know how you've used the PLR.me content to help you create it. Sure. Hey, everybody, fellow entrepreneurs. So glad to be here. So I discovered Ronnie uh, like probably two years ago and I was like, what the heck is PLR? And then I started looking, <laughs> I think like everybody, right? We're like, what the heck is a PLR? And you, you like, nah, this is too good to be true. There's no way that you wrote this stuff. You telling me I can sell it, put it on my website? Like, no. 
And it's like, this is like a hoax, right? Somebody's gonna come and be like, you owe me thousands of dollars for copyright infringement. Cause you know, I'm a, I'm a psychologist by nature. And so everything is a copyright, everything, right? You have to give credit to everybody who's ever said anything. And so I was a little skeptical. So I kind of like kept watching the site and like registered, but never paid for the content. And then last year I decided I was gonna be serious with my stuff and I was gonna go for it. So I went ahead, I registered, I paid for my membership and everything, and then I was trying to figure out how to do it. So I originally purchased a class that I was going to offer as you know, to, to my clients. Um, but then I started to see opportunities. So like everybody else, I went down a rabbit hole of looking at all of this stuff that is on here. It's like affirmations, it's checklists, it's worksheets, it's blog posts. It's all this great stuff. So I started to formulate a plan. Okay, so what can I do to make my life easier using PLR? That was my first thought. So I separated into categories. Okay, so I could use these for blogs. I could use this for videos, right? I could do this training. So I've done a couple of cool things. So the book came about because, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm in, I'm a therapist. I do a lot of counseling and a lot of people have trouble with, you know, self-love, self-confidence. So I looked at the affirmation stuff and there are, I don't know, it's thousands of affirmations. So each affirmation was really cool about PLR.me um, is the affirmations have reflection questions. They have like, it's so many different parts. And so what I did was you see the top where it said, I'm filled with purpose. It has a bunch of those sort of words. So I just kind of tweaked a few of them and made them I am affirmations. And then I took the today part because saying that you're going to do something today is so powerful. And so I just took the today part and for the most part, just kept it the same. And then I kept the reflection questions the same. And I started to share them first with my, you know, with people like near close by me and we would talk about them and they were like, oh my God, I really love this. This is so amazing. I was sharing it with my clients. And so one client was like, you need to put this in a book. Ding, 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 book. That's how we got the idea. So I went through the content and I chose, I think I only chose like 35 of the thousands and I put together this quick little book. And so it was real simple. I took the, um, the I, I downloaded my different affirmation. I saved it in uh, Microsoft Word. I deleted what I didn't need. I put together each page. And then I found a guy on Fiverr and he put it together and I decided to make the book six by nine because I wanted to keep it really, you know, really cute that people could like, you know, put it in their purse or give it to their daughter or, you know, whoever. And so he designed it, guys, I think for like 35 bucks. He designed the cover and the inside content for me. And I've already made like $300 off of this book. And I probably will make more when I start doing more marketing for it. But I have plans to write a whole series of these I Love Myself books using PLR content. Because you, I can get self-confidence stuff off of here. I can get, you know, anxiety, depression, all of those sort of topics that we focus on with our clients and use them. And I'm a big proponent of telling the other therapists, you need to have another way to make money because oftentimes we can't see with so many people one-to-one, -one, right? If you are a therapist and you're seeing like eight clients one-to-one, -one, you're going to burn out. It's too much because people are giving you heavy problems. Like this morning I had a client who was recalling her mother death from cancer. Like that shook me this morning. So I had to take a break, right? But if I was seeing eight clients, how could I do that? And so using PRLR allows me to reach more people, right? Offer them more services in between sessions and also not write it. Can we say that part? Not write it myself. I don't have the time to write this stuff, you know, but I get to use it. And I've used so many PLR. So I did a training the other day. I also do coaching, business coaching for therapists. And I did a training using PLR, um, influence and marketing, branding, personal branding. And when I tell you guys, people love that training. And I told them straight up, I was like, I got this from PLR. The only thing I did was delete some of the slides because it was so many slides. And I just put in there personal lives to the therapist. I didn't write this stuff. And I did this training, I did this training to 150 people. I put it on Clubhouse, audio, and on Zoom, and 150 people show up. And I still have people on my list asking me for the link for my training um, so that they can see it. 
So there's so much stuff in here. I added it to my membership site for my clients that have um, therapists who pay me for, you know, coaching and a part of a membership site. I added it in there with the video. And then I put in there like questions that you guys give. So if you ever use that personal branding slide deck, by the way, I mean, guys, it's 10 credits and it's way worth way more than 10 credits. So I use the slide deck and in the end of it, it tells you what you need for your personal branding. I turned those into questions and made that a worksheet that I give people at the end of it. I didn't write any of it, but guess what? It was super amazing. So that's how I use PLR. So I guess PLR works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're amazing. I, amazing. I just love your energy. I love your enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. I love how you've just like just really gone gone um, full steam and and sharing this with your clients and with your with your audience and I love it I just love everything about you and, and your what you're doing so thank you so much for being here um there was a question that someone asked was who's your guy on Fiverr you know can you refer him to us so if you don't mind uh, I had to share that maybe in the in the chat and we can also paste that into um the replay oh um, yes I will definitely I have to pull him up um who I use and I also use I forgot to mention I also create a card deck for these and I use oh, another cool. lady um I forgot to share that with you Ronnie she created this really cool card deck for me for like 50 something bucks it was a 34 card deck I was able to put my picture my contact information in there and then um the people from Vervante, Vervante Publishing, I talked to her, they're going to print it for me on demand where people can order it off my website for like 10 bucks and I can easily sell it for 15 or $17. And awesome. this is this is already created for me. I just had to get somebody to put it together. So I'm going to pull that up right now and put it in the chat. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Oh, I, you're amazing. I, you, I got to see this. I'm so curious what the cards look yeah. like. The That's cards, so yeah, cool. I have to, um, I have to send you the cards and um, I'm going to take a picture of it and uh, it's on, um, it's, I can send it to you. Obviously it's your content, so I'm not going to worry about you stealing it. So, <laughs> I will, <laughs> so I'll send it to you. I created, um, using those affirmation, I've actually created two decks. Now that I think about it, one of them have to be um, a little smaller because I found out when you create card decks, if you create them smaller, you can, you know, sell them for more money. Um, then when you create the big decks, because the big decks are harder to print and it costs more money to print. So just little things I've learned along the way um, as I build like, you know, a, a side hustle of creating what's called low content products. So that's something mm -hmm. else that I love about PLR. I can use PLR to create low content product like journals and cards and stuff and notebooks and stuff like that. That's awesome. I, you're, I'm like, I love your energy. I'm just like totally grinning <laughs> ear to ear. You're awesome. Um, yeah. So, so, uh, so several questions for you in the chat. So first off, um, a few people want to connect with you. So how can people connect with you, get in touch with you? How can they hear you on Clubhouse as well? So if you guys need an invite for Clubhouse and you have a iPhone, let me know. I will send you a link. Clubhouse has gotten so interesting. So they have, I think I have like a hundred invites or something like that. To, okay. to you so let me know if you need an invite um you guys can email me at my first name at my first and last name.com so it's ia at iabrandy.com and if you guys okay. ever need like coaching and stuff like that i do charge but i promise you it's well worth it um and i will show you all my little secrets that i use with mm -hmm. my clients um to help them use PLR. I'm ask Ronnie, I get like more credits from PLR than ever because I, I literally have it in my Instagram link tree. It says PLR at the bottom, get your credits. And like everybody that hears it are like, I love it. All my therapist friends know PLR is the place to go. It saves their money. So yeah, definitely contact me and I'll be more than happy to show you guys. But I'm going to Go and grab the two names of the th or three names of the three people that I work with to create my journal and my two cards. And then I'm going to send Ronnie the, the deck so he can show it to you guys. So I'm awesome. going to put myself on mute. You're, you're I, awesome. I, I want a copy as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool, right? I mean, how no, awesome is, is it? it? It's just so inspiring to see uh, Aya, you've transformed the content in so many unique ways. 
and you've just you've shown your enthusiasm not only in how you speak but in what you produce and how you share that and so i'm just so honored um, to know you i'm so honored that you're our client i'm so honored that you're here with us today um there will be uh, so i pasted the link in the chat so ia at iabrandy.com i will also uh, share that uh, in the replay as well um and uh yeah look out for the links uh for when for when i shares that as well so i just i you're amazing thank you so much for sharing that and um yeah i just uh, thank when you. i saw yeah, i'm just grabbing the links and stuff so that you guys can have it um i'll put it Fantastic. in the chat or ronnie do you prefer i just send everything to you on um facebook you know you can just put it here what will be easier for you um you can put it in the chat that's great okay. that way other people will see it at the same time and then nice. we'll also grab it for the replay as well okay. thank you you're amazing thank you so much um and yeah so again to me that's a huge inspiration everybody because think about how i has completely transformed things and there's no excuses she just found a way right she found a publisher um you can use uh, uh, amazon create space i think you were mentioning vervente i think this is the company name uh, maybe i you can put the link to your your self publishing as well I put it vervente um and they are amazing. You can actually schedule time on their calendar and they will talk you through it. So they told me a trick about how you make money from not using Amazon. So you put it on your website, you get a, a buy now link from PayPal and you put it on your website. And then when the email orders come in, you can trigger it in your email, like if you use Outlook and it sends them an automatic email to mail it out for you. So your hands are completely clean and all you have to do is just send traffic to your product and you can use Pinterest to send traffic for free to your product because Pinterest is the spot. So yeah, I'll share all my little tips and tricks with you guys. That's well. Awesome. I put Vervante um, information in here and there's another one called Smart Press. They're amazing too. All of these are print on demand or print in order and hold on to it, but I don't have the time to ship stuff out. So I like it that other people ship it for me. Oh, I hear you. I, I I tried that once like 15 years ago. Let me print a whole bunch of stuff. That was a bad idea because then you have to ship it and I don't want to do that. So uh, definitely use the print on demand services. That's a, a great, great strategy. Um, just to share some of the praise. Um, I never thought about that. So cool. Wow. I'm so pumped. I, Brandy, you're doing such a wonderful job. Yes. Inspiring. That girl is on fire. A whole bunch of fire emojis as well. And um, yeah, I just... Um, <coughs> Yeah, thank you for being here. You're you're amazing, and, and I just love to follow and see all the amazing things that you're um, you're accomplishing. Now the links are in the chat, so please just scroll up a few minutes. So there's Vervante, v e r v a n t e dot com. There's SmartPress dot com, um, and then uh, she's also pasting some of the links to Fiverr. Again, we will open that uh, and put that into the replay and description as well. So, but let's keep moving on. I mean, we have a few questions here that we can answer. I'm hoping, I know we're kind of already over the hour mark. Um, so, uh, well, we talked about this, I think before already, it seems most mm -hmm. of your stuff is for coaching. I'm an insurance. How can I use it? Think about the whole person. What are their struggles? What do they, what do they need help with? Um, because of course, if someone is buying insurance, maybe they've got families, maybe they're buying it for life insurance. Maybe they're buying health insurance. There's a whole bunch of uh, content that you can share across all of that. Um, so Richard, if you don't mind, maybe just collect all of the links. Mm -hmm. Oh, I realize it's going just to the panelists, I think some of the chat. So um, if you don't mm -hmm. mind, Richard, just collect the links that I is posting and then um, send it to all attendees. I think that was that's what happened. That's what's happening. Um, okay. So uh, next question, how do I utilize your content across multiple social platforms? So the, this is a great question. Obviously there are a ton of different social platforms, everything from the obvious ones like Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and LinkedIn and Pinterest, and you can go down the list. My first recommendation is don't try to be everywhere. It is a recipe mm -hmm. for overwhelm and it is not worth doing. So absolutely um, pick where your audience is. If you're a business coach, consultant, LinkedIn is probably a very good place for you. Uh, and you can invest in developing your audience there. Um, and maybe Facebook, right? It, it depends on your audience. Um, so, so pick the platform that you want to devote your time and energy. And also think about the type of 
content that you're going to produce. Because for example, if you're going to produce video content, LinkedIn is thirsty for video content. They want more videos. People don't post a lot of videos there. So that's a great place to post your videos. And then you can repurpose and publish the same video on Facebook and or even on Instagram as well. If it's a, a short, you know, 60 second, or even if it's a little bit longer, it can go into the, the, um, the video reels or whatever Instagram calls it these days. Um, so, so you can repurpose the same content across multiple platforms, but the key is don't get overwhelmed. That is absolutely not worth the time, the stress, the, the pain and suffering, just pick one or two things and then just focus your energy on that. Um, all right. Um, Next thing, thank you for posting the links. Um, so then, uh, and there's one more, I think, Vervente as well. Uh, I didn't um, see that one. So, okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about the next thing. So how to open the package. I don't understand what I'm looking at. Um, Richard, I'm gonna interrupt mm. you and probably this is a good one for you to talk about here. Mm. Okay, so when you download any of our content, you get it in a zip file, which is basically a compressed file. And when you open that up, if you're on Windows, we do suggest that if you have any problems with it, there is a program called 7-Zip, seven, seven isn't it, Ronnie? Yep. Yeah, 7-Zip. So this will actually open it up perfectly for you. If, if you encounter problems, Windows sometimes can give problems. And then what you will see is you will see that there are a number of folders that are actually opened uh, from that zip file. So you have a PDF folder and the PDF is the ready to go fully designed document that you can share with your audience straight away. Or if you are a monthly or yearly member, what you can actually do is you can brand it with our PDF branding tool. Then you will get the Microsoft Word version if it's uh, an article or an ebook, which you can open up. And again, you can just go in and you can tweak the content as you wish there and then save it as a PDF. You will also see a pages format, which is for Apple users where they can, again, open it up, tweak it, save it as a PDF. And then on some of our, of our resources, we actually give you what we call the source file, which is the plain text file, which is just the, the text. This comes in, a lot of our articles come like that. Because some people will say, well, I want to just copy it into my WordPress blog, or I want to copy it into LinkedIn, and I don't want all the formatting. You could also, if it's a presentation, you would get the PowerPoint, and you would get the keynote as well, which is the um, Apple version of it there. And, and my, my lovely assistant here has uh, just shared a screen. <laughs> so you can see there we have the DocX. Uh, we then, uh, it's just, yeah. And then we have, yeah, the PDF, I just wanted to, we have the so it depends file. on the products. I realized yes. I was muted. Uh, it depends on the product. So, uh, articles and affirmations, you're going to have the three formats. So you're going to have the docx, and it's organized nicely for you. This is completely editable, of course. Um, mm -hmm. and you can kind of see a little snippet of, of it here. Um, the PDF is the designed version of the docx. Um, so uh, what we did was we, we actually created a tool that automatically designs the um, articles and affirmations into these formats. Um, uh, uh, if you can keep a secret, it is something we're working on to release. Um, so that way you'll be able to create your own PDF versions of content that, that will look beautifully designed. I, yeah, I haven't even told you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh so God, there's something that's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's some, some things we're working on behind the scenes. I um, secrets. <laughs> <laughs> so so but the the docx file what you see here is is completely editable and the um and you can open that in Google Docs, you can open that in um in Microsoft Word or in Apple Pages or text mm. editors. The PDF of course is a PDF and it is designed um, so it just kind of makes it look a little bit cleaner. That would be great if you're just wanting to have a quick handout you're sending to a client or you want to upload it to a member's area, um, something just sort of ready to go. And then, as you mentioned, Richard, there's the text file as well. Um, now, more complicated documents, um, things like ebooks or um, worksheets, checklists. Let me just uh, find one here. Um, so they will have more files, right? So if you're on a Mac, there's the Apple Pages file. And this would be because it's more in-depth, detailed design um, required to make the document look as good as it does. Of course, the PDF version of the same document, the source version is just the text. It is what is what comes back after it has been researched, after it's been written, after it has been edited, 
this is the document that you get. And again, it's fully editable. You can take that and um, uh, you can redesign it. You can add to it. You can remove from it. You can read it as a script and you can use the docx um, all for, for any of those purposes, just like any content that you have. Um, and then there is the web cover graphics. Um, so that what you see here are just for, for eBooks, for um, worksheets, checklists, there's some promotional graphics that you can use. And then there's a Word file. Now you're thinking, well, what's the difference between the Word file and the source file? The source file is not designed, but the Word file, it is. And it's, it's a little bit tricky because of course, uh, we use Google fonts. You want to have, we want to make the designs look pretty, right? We want them to look nice. Um, and so if you open this and, and the word file kind of looks a little bit jumbled or weird, well, you want to make sure that you are installing any of the missing fonts. So you can just go to fonts.google.com and then download those fonts as well. Um, yeah, so that, those are the files that you get. Uh, let's go to the next question. What do I need to record a video and how do I add my voice? Uh, Want to grab that, Richard? I will be right back. Literally just grab it. Um, smartphone. You can take a smartphone and you can just get a, a tripod. I just have one here, mount it on there, and you can actually just record like that. You can use the headset that you have, or the, the, the headphones that you have with your smartphone as well. Very, very simple. You can just do that. Or what you could get is you could get an external mic that you would connect up to your smartphone um, just to give you a little bit of better sound. But don't worry about that. You don't, you know, you don't need expensive cameras. I, I haven't upgraded to an expensive camera. I just use a smartphone and anything from an iPhone. Uh, if you're an Apple person, an iPhone 6, I used to do a lot of our videos on that. Um, so use what you have because there is a tendency sometimes to say, I will do the videos when I have a better uh, smartphone, when I have whatever it may be. As they say, the, the saying, when is the best time to make a video? Well, right now, okay? So you don't need to go off and you don't need to um, invest too heavily. Start off and reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. Um, when you start making the money or when you want to, you don't need. But definitely I think a tripod is probably the best investment. Because if you're holding it like this and then your hand is shaking and you're nervous, well, then the, the, the video looks like that. It's, oof, it's, it's not so good. That can be a headache there. Um, so just, you know, get a good tripod and that's it. Uh, I think that's it. And then to record your voice, as I said, you can just uh, use the actual headphones that come with your smartphone. Mine are nice and tangled. Or you can get that external mic. Absolutely. Um, let's get to one more question and then any final yes. last uh, questions that you may have. So what platforms should I use to deliver my course and where can I sell my content? Uh, so, well, first off, I show, showed some excellent ways earlier mm -hmm. of how to sell your content, where to sell your content, all sorts of great ideas. Uh, Richard, I know you also have some great ideas when it comes to this because you've mm -hmm. created several courses on Udemy um, and you have over 46,000 students on Udemy. Uh, so you have great wisdom to share. I'd like to hear your thoughts as well. Yes. I think it depends on what you want to achieve from the course. Um, I, as I said last, uh, last week on the open office, Udemy won't make you rich, but it opens up a lot of doors. And I'll give you an example. The other day, I got an email from somebody who said, um, we're starting up a new platform. We would like to have your courses on the platform and we pay per streaming minute that people actually, uh, it, it's like a monthly subscription. But for example, they pay 10 cent per minute streamed. Now I was looking back at my Udemy um, statistics and I might stream five to 10,000 minutes, uh, uh, five to 10,000 minutes uh, uh, a month. So that might work out to be two to $500, uh, 200 to $500. But that wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't put those courses up on Udemy. So while I haven't made a fortune from Udemy itself, it's opened up doors. And as well, when I say to people, I have 46,000 students, it's like, wow, they don't say, how much did you make? So Udemy is very good for getting out there, getting yourself known because they have the audience. But the problem is they do take all of the money in return. And somebody had actually said that to me from last week's um, 
uh, open office, they said, oh, I was going to put stuff on Udemy, but then I see I'm not going to make money on it. But that's just one thing that you can do. Once you start getting, po uh, your courses start getting popular, you will get testimonials, which can't be faked. They, these are real testimonials from real people. Now you can have those testimonials and use them um, to sell the course on other platforms or on your own website that you could say, this is what people have, have, have said about my course. So I find Udemy a good marketing platform. It's not for money. So create short courses on Udemy, 90 minutes long, so that um, you don't want to spend 17 hours and then make um, $2 with a thousand students as an example. Let's just take that as an example. So um, you can do that. You could think about Thinkrific, Teachable. Um, there's Kajabi. I think once you're a little bit established, then go to those sites because they do charge um, or they take uh, a commission on every sale or both. So if you're just starting off, do you want to be paying $29, $39, $49 a month until you have some momentum? So Udemy is a good testing, a good testing area, I think. And I, I, um, you mentioned you're using Podia, P-O-D-I-A.com. Um, Jonathan mentioned, I've already invested, paid for Teachable. How can I use that platform or what are your ideas? Honestly, the platform doesn't really matter. Um, mm. Ultimately, if you're comfortable, you're confident, you already have stuff on there, don't switch, like keep it. That's great. The key thing is, what are you going to do next, right? How are you going to market it? Well, look at what I is doing. She's on Clubhouse and she's sharing on, on social platforms. She's building her audience. Uh, that's, what, that's what you want to focus on. It's not the technology. The technology is not going to make you rich. You could be on Udemy and make a bajillion dollars or zero dollars. You could be on Teachable and make a bajillion dollars or zero dollars. The technology, the tool doesn't matter. It's really about you what you invest in your marketing, what you invest in, in your outreach and how you reach people. Um, so that's where I would really focus on. And we had a great question I, I, here. I, I'm trying to, to, to picture a bajillion dollars. It's hard to picture, but it, it's possible. <laughs> it is possible. Um, so Regina has a great question and I, I hope you're still here because this one, I, I would love if you could answer it. Um, she's asking, what is Clubhouse? Oh, hey, for Virginia. Um, so Clubhouse is an audio only social media platform. Um, and when Clubhouse first started, it was for iOS users. So iPhone, um, iPads users. And basically you, you, will, you will enter Clubhouse and they have all of these rooms and the rooms are talking about everything from, Ronnie was on my Clubhouse one night, right? And yep. you are like a guest, you're either in the audience or you're on the stage and you're sharing, you're sharing your knowledge, essentially. You are um, just in, um, interacting with people and getting to know people. And so how I've used Clubhouse to build my audience, to be honest with y'all, I've made $10,000 from my audience on Clubhouse. I got on Clubhouse oh. November 21st. I started selling products two months ago. I just started giving away, I do the 80-20 rule. I give away 80% free and I charge for 20%. So the how is what I charge for. The what, the where, the when, give it to you for free. But the how you're going to do it, I charge for. And so I would tell them, you know, hey, you should um, get passive income. Hey, you should do this. And this is the type of passive income to get. But then like, you know, how do I do this? How do I implement in my business? Okay, let's schedule a consulting call. And so I would schedule a bunch of consultations, right? Because Clubhouse connects to your Instagram. So make sure that your Instagram has a link tree or something that has a calendar. And so I would say, hey, you guys should just get on my calendar. Let's chat. And for a whole two months, that's what I did. I talked to like five to six people a day for 15 minutes, explaining to them how, you know, they should do I mean, what they should do. And then I would realize that they still didn't know what to do. So then I created a monthly membership, right? So the therapist started paying, they pay like a hundred dollars a month to be part of my membership. And it has courses and live in a private Facebook group. And then some people was like, well, I need one-on-one. -on -one. I can't do this. So then I started charging. When I first started charging, it was really low. It was like a thousand dollars for like a four month program. Now I charge a thousand dollars a month to work with them. And they have no problem paying me because it's personalized. So my email list is only 500. And I think I've kind of beat the 10% rule already of 10% of your email list will pay you. And so it's been wonderful. So this month I will probably hit like 20 something thousand. And you're talking about five months in a year with only starting three months ago. So that's how I use Clubhouse. It's really amazing. Um, 
for you to meet people. That's why I would say if you are a talker, you have a really great personality, cultivate your hallway with what you like. Like if you like stuff on branding or marketing or um, pitch rooms or all these different things. And when you go in there as the panelist is talking, raise your hand, come on stage, introduce yourself and say, hey, I am IA Brandy, I'm a therapist and I'm a coach for therapists. This is what I do. Then you stick to the topic and you share and you say, if anybody have any further questions, hit me in the DMs, let's chat further. And from there, people just start following you and they just, they follow your, your personality basically, they buy you. So you're building relationships and then other people will invite you to create rooms with them. And sometimes I just get on Clubhouse and I just start a room and I just start talking and people will join me and just jump in there and start talking to me. And that's how I've met all these wonderful people, accountants, CPAs. I mean, I've met millionaires in there. There's all kinds of people on Clubhouse because is there, you know, the, the fact that you're anonymous, right? People are not like looking at your picture, they're just hearing your voice. And so they're making a relationship solely based on your personality. So that's what I like about Clubhouse. But there are other audio, this fan base that's also available. And fan base pays you. I don't know if you guys know that they pay you for being on there. People pay you for sharing content. So check out fan base and it's pretty new. So that's just my thought. That's amazing. I, I have to say, I've, I've learned so much from this open office. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're just absolutely I, wealth amazing. of knowledge. She's amazing. Absolutely. Um, so so uh, some questions are, we're asking about how do I get an invite to Clubhouse or how do I find you on Clubhouse? I, uh, I mentioned that uh, they can just search, uh, if, get, just get the Clubhouse app. Name. Yeah, yep. just search my name. Um, you'll find me. I'm on there. I have a clubhouse. It's called My Therapist is Black because the core of the audience that I work with are Black therapists because of the lack of representation and visibility. But I help everyone. So if you guys need like a walk through the clubhouse, reach out to me. I'm on Facebook also so you guys can send me messages. But Facebook is not... I don't take it as seriously as I do like Instagram and um, Clubhouse. So I'm very strategic, which I was going to say to you. If you get on Clubhouse, check the bios of people you admire. You'll notice they put in there what they're looking for and why they're on there. Get on Clubhouse for business and stick to the business room. Stay out of those messy rooms that talk about gossip. Like, you know, you want your audience to take you serious. Don't go places where they're going to think you're a joke. So fan base is just another, Julie asked, fan base is another option. So it's all audio. So you could be in your pajamas laid up in your bed, which is normally what happens with me on Wednesday nights. I'm laid up in my bed on Clubhouse from 10 to 12 because I co-host the show with another therapist, which is what Ronnie came on called the branded therapist. And so like, I think my club has like 2000 and change people that are a part of my club. And a lot of those people follow me and they purchase my products and services. But the goal is just to, it's to grow your audience, like Ronnie said. So it was through Clubhouse and Instagram that my email list grew organically. I didn't do anything else but show up. And, With some and content I, from here. Let me put I that was, out there. I was going to actually ask you. So I know you use the PLR to be content. You've already shown that that's outstanding. But how often are you on Clubhouse? Like, what's your schedule like? I had to cut back. Clubhouse was addictive. When we all first started, nobody got any sleep. I swear to God, nobody slept. We were on Clubhouse in the middle of the night, early in the morning. I was getting no work done. So now I have a Clubhouse schedule. I turn off notifications. Don't ping me nowhere. Don't call me. Um, nothing. I'm only on Clubhouse Tuesdays and Wednesdays, a periodic Thursday and a periodic Saturday. Like if there's a room that I want to be in and I see it, I'll put it on my calendar because now Clubhouse has it where you have, they share um, a link. So I can put that link in my calendar and then it'll just let me know when the room is started and I just click and go in there. They've made it so you can share it to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of those places. Awesome. Yeah. So I just, I just want to point out something. Um, she's got a schedule, right? She's consistent. She's not on Clubhouse mm -hmm. once in a while. I is on Clubhouse like, you know her schedule. You know when her shows are. Think of it like your favorite TV show, your favorite radio program. There's consistency there. And that's a huge X factor to yes. her success. Not, I mean, obviously, she's got an amazing magnetic personality. She's brilliant. 
such a go-getter. She's incredible in so many aspects. And, and I, I, I love you. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being here. No, you thank know? you. We all as entrepreneurs, we have to share. We have to share. We have to share. We have to share. So I'm really grateful for you guys and the content you've created has allowed me. Because I think about it. If, if you're going to get in front of people, you have to know what to talk about, right? And so PRLR mm. takes away that angst of not knowing. I heard you mention about videos on LinkedIn. So I don't really use LinkedIn for that purpose. But now you got me thinking, what professional resources on PLR can I create a video about? What about the, the, the slide deck on being happy, right? Everyone can relate to being happy. What if I did a video on seven ways to show up and be happy and know your happiness triggers, right? As a professional, that's a perfect video for LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Guess who didn't have to write that content? So that's the way that I love to use your content because that's what the type of stuff we should be doing. We should be sharing content that changes lives and then the people will come to you don't worry about payment i promise you that they will come to you because you give great content but if you keep thinking well i don't want to share this because then i'm not going to make no money then you're not going to make any money because people need to get value from you before they'll pay you for the other stuff you, you said it you're you're mm -hmm. bang on it's so true create value share value be you and then be consistent. That's really the formula, mm -hmm. right? That's how you market. It's about being consistent. You have to be consistent. You have to give value. I mean, in the few minutes that you've spoken, I, I mean, I feel like everybody knows you and loves you like in, in a split second there, because you're just giving your all and you're giving so much value. And, and ultimately my question is what, what can we learn from that? And how can we implement that in our own businesses? That's what I want to leave off on. I mean, it's, we're now at the uh, 90 minute mark. Um, Aya, thank you so much. Richard, thank you so much. And thank you all for being here. You know, this this to me was such a powerful session. We, I'm inspired and I'm motivated. Oh, I'm inspired as well, yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to start and, using and, Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going to all be like losing sleep like Aya and being in the middle, up, up in the middle of the night listening and, and chiming in on rooms. It's such a cool concept for, though. But the point though is invest in you, your personality, your audience, and then be consistent in that investment of your time and your talents. There's so much you can do with the PLR.me content. And ultimately what it boils down to is action. It just takes time to go out and do that. Um, you know, honestly, we, we didn't even get into any specific offer or anything for um, for PLR.me today, you can go to PLR.me, you can go to the pricing page, you can see the different plans if you're not yet a member, um, or if you are a member and you want to purchase more credits, you can do that there as well. That's really not the point of today, though, because today we want to inspire you, we want to entertain, educate, and, and help you move forward in your business. And so I hope that we did that for you today. Um, Thank you. And any other feedback, any, any questions, any comments, please, you can leave that in the comments. Send us an email. Please connect with Aya as well, because she's incredible if you haven't already recognized that. Um, Aya, thank you. Richard, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye. <laughs>